Hey everyone, it's David. So Batman vs Superman has just dropped in the cinemas. I hope you're as excited as I am, and I thought it would be really fun to talk about some of the science behind Superman. So there are entire books written about the science of Superman. So what I'm going to try and do is try and inform the discussion with some of the very latest results from exoplanets. And in particular, let's think about Superman's home planet and whether that can explain why it is that he can appear to fly on the Earth. So in some of the early versions of Superman, he couldn't fly yet, he could just jump really high. And scientifically, that's a lot easier for us to try and explain. So I'm going to try and focus on that in this video. One way you might be able to explain this is if Superman's home planet, Krypton, had a higher surface gravity than the Earth. And in that scenario, it would not be strange to imagine that the inhabitants had evolved stronger muscles in order to cope with that higher surface gravity. So a real-world example of this is when the Apollo astronauts went to the moon and they could jump much higher because the surface gravity on the moon is much less than the Earth. So then the question is how high could Krypton's surface gravity really be? Now the reason why the moon has less surface gravity than the Earth is because its mass is less. So the easiest way to make Krypton have a higher surface gravity is to pile on more mass, make it a very massive, rocky planet. But hold on there, there are limits. You can't just pile on more and more rock. Eventually, these rocky planets will start to accrete gaseous envelopes. In essence, they start to become gas giants, and of course, that's not a good place to live. So right now, we think that the boundary between rocky planets and gaseous planets happens at around one and a half Earth radii, or about two Earth masses. That's not very much, and that's actually a really surprising result. When astronomers first got started in this game, we thought that the limit would be more like ten times the mass of the Earth, not two. And it's bad news for Superman because now he can only have a planet which is twice as massive as the Earth. The other freedom I have here to try and make the surface gravity as high as possible is to change the composition of the planet itself. So the mass of the Earth's core takes up about a third of the total mass, and that's the densest part of the Earth. But let's say I made that core 100% the size of the planet. So basically I'm just living on a planetary core, a big ball of iron. So for the same mass, two Earth masses, that iron is denser and therefore the radius is much less, and that in turn will make the surface gravity higher. Because if I'm on a smaller planet, I'm closer to the center of gravity right in the middle of that planet. So setting Krypton to be two Earth masses and a big ball of iron, that gets me up to about 2.7 times the surface gravity of the Earth. So given that the highest human beings can jump on the Earth is about 7 to 8 feet, then that means that 2.7 times by 8 gives us something like 22 feet, is the highest that we could ever imagine Superman being able to jump on the Earth. Now you might remember in Man of Steel it said that the Earth's atmosphere is somehow more beneficial to Superman, and he's able to be stronger as a result of that. A real world example of this would be blood doping, which is essentially increasing the oxygen supply in your blood. So maybe Superman's home planet Krypton had less oxygen in its atmosphere than the Earth does. This actually happens in the real world. I mean, athletes really do train at high altitudes where there's less oxygen, so their body sort of gets used to that lower oxygen level. And then when they come down to sea level, they perform much better. Now, the problem with this is that, at least for human beings, that doesn't actually make us stronger or faster. All it does is increase our endurance. We can last for longer with that extra oxygen. So Superman would be able to last in the fight for longer on the Earth's atmosphere, but he wouldn't necessarily be stronger. So we have to come back to this idea of making Krypton just have a really high surface gravity. Now we ended up with 22 feet for a jump before. Now, is there some way I can increase the surface gravity even higher beyond a factor of 2.7? So one way you might be able to do this is to take a planet like Jupiter, a big gas giant, which has an iron core, and strip away all of that outer gas. Now, that can happen through a process called photoevaporation, but it would be pretty extreme to strip away absolutely everything. If you did this though, I think you could probably get the surface gravity up to about four times that of the Earth. So the big game here is that you've gone beyond this two Earth mass limit, and now you have a solid ball of mostly iron, which is 15 Earth masses. And obviously that's going to increase the surface gravity. So a factor of four higher surface gravity, it helps. But can we tune the dials of physics up to the extreme and make Superman fly? 
Now, the core of most planetary objects is made of iron, but you can imagine replacing that with something denser, something heavier. Now, to do that, you're going to have to wander up the periodic table towards the heavier radioactive elements, things like uranium, plutonium. Now, I should say, physically speaking, we really don't expect to find planets made out of uranium, but it is technically, physically possible. On the flip side for comic books, this works really well because Krypton explodes from a chain nuclear reaction, and obviously, being sat on a ball of uranium, you can imagine ways to do that. So now we have a Jupiter-like planet with a uranium core, we've stripped away all of the gas through photo evaporation, and we're left over with this ball of uranium that has a surface gravity seven and a half times that of the Earth, and that's about the best I can give you. So this means that unless Kryptonians on Krypton can jump way higher than Earthlings can on the Earth, that when Superman comes to the Earth, the highest he should be able to jump is about 60 feet. All right, don't get me wrong, if I saw someone jump over a six-story building, I'd be pretty impressed. But that's some way off the events that we see take place in Man of Steel and Batman vs Superman. So when you go see the film, suspend your belief a little bit, have fun, but at the same time, I think it's kind of fun to imagine what a real-world Superman might be capable of. So thank you so much for watching. We should have a new video coming on Thursday by my graduate student, Alex. Make sure you catch it. It's going to be a really good one, I promise. So to get that and all the other videos from the Cool Woods Laboratory, make sure you click the subscribe button below. If you have any questions on this video or any of the others, make sure you leave a comment and we will try to get back to you with a Q&A video. So enjoy the film and stay curious.